I'm Will, and welcome to Venture to Rome. Today, we're putting the tongue box on Hicks. Let's get started. Meet Hicks. That's the name we've given to this early 1950s Bantam T3C trailer. My best buddy Chris and I bought it together with the intention of doing a rough restoration and then modifying it to give it a second life as an overlanding trailer. In our last episode, we installed stabilizer jacks on the frame and molly panels on the rack. Today, we're figuring out how to mount a tongue box on the front of the trailer. Let's get started. The box is gonna go right here, just in front of the spare tire. And then um, we're gonna be using um, some kind of like uh, U-bolts um, to mount it directly, to clamp it directly to the frame, both on the sides here, as well as to the front. So this is a tongue box that we got from Harbor Freight. I know you're thinking Harbor Freight, but let me tell you something, this tongue box was affordable, had a ton, like thousands of really great reviews. It's lockable and it's the perfect size for this small trailer. So. We're happy that it was at Harbor Freight and it was a little bit less expensive. And we're gonna mount this puppy on the trailer right now and see how it fits. The box was super light, easy to carry, and easy to maneuver. But before we could mount it on the frame and take a look at how it fit, we needed one very important thing. So we were about to do a test fitting and we realized uh, we didn't have a key. So we looked in the box and uh, sure enough, there's a key, which is good. What else do we have? Even two keys, Will. Two keys. Yeah, one That's for each good. hand. Um, yeah, and then they actually have the mounting bolts for it. So, so they're just kind of like square U-bolts, it looks like. Exactly. With some, that worked perfect. Yeah, with some nuts and washers and things and mm -hmm. a plate. Yeah, and then there are the nylock nuts, so you don't got to worry about them backing off. And yeah, it's going to be awesome. There's a couple mounting holes already on this, but we're not going to use those. No. So I guess what we should do is like crawl under there, mark it, from underneath where we, where we need those holes, you think? Mm. And then mm -hmm. flip it over, drill the holes, and fit it on there? Yeah, I think so. I think that's a good way to go. Chris is much more reliable with the tape measure, so he was the one in charge of the placement. We traced the outline of the frame on the bottom of the box and got ready to drill the holes. We thought that after drilling the holes in the bottom of the box, we could slip in the U-bolts, which fit around the frame. But after a little positioning and a little encouragement from the mallet, we found that we had a problem. Okay, so we have a problem. We got the U-bolt to fit over the frame, uh, but in doing so, we uh, had to bend it out just a little bit. And now we're having trouble getting the plate, kind of the washer plate that goes on the bottom, to fit. So. We're trying to bend back the U-bolts just a bit, but we're probably half an inch, you think, Chris? Uh, almost, yeah, yeah it's, it's quite a ways. Yeah, pretty, it's pretty bad, so we might have to go to a plan B here, we'll see. After a few swear words, some good hard staring at the box, and three bad ideas from me, Chris found the solution. We can just drill through the box and then drill through the frame and mount the box directly to the frame instead of, just, instead of using the U-bolts. One, I think it's going to be a stronger connection overall, and yeah. two, it's um, going to be a guarantee, it's going to be guaranteed that it fits and works. Do we have a bit that's going to be able to pierce this? Yeah, it's a titanium bit. Great, well, let's do it. So we're going to use the outline of the frame here to pick a couple spots where we think would be good right. to anchor it. Drill those holes, yeah. put it on there, and then open it and up then, and drill it through this. Yeah, yeah. Mark. He's just a marking the holes in all the wrong places. Marking the holes. Did you say holes or? Well, Did I? I don't know. Mm -hmm. Did I? Drilling them holes. Press down on it. Huh? Press down on it. There it is. Sorry. Sorry, I was pressing down on it. Who locked this? Come on. After drilling the new holes into the box, it was time to mark and drill the holes into the frame. That oh, seems only fair. It. He starts punching it and like all the dust starts oh, to shit in my sorry, eyes. Oh, <laughs> sorry, man. Sorry. What's wrong with this guy? You see this little piece there? I'm gonna put it just to the left. <laughs> just to the other. We put a little paint on the holes to seal up the bare metal and try it again to get the box on the frame. This time we were successful and began attaching the box with four bolts going directly from the box through the frame of the trailer. Attaching them was very easy now that everything lined up and the end result looked pretty darn good. Yeah. 
There was, however, one final problem. All right, so we've got this thing on here. It's really secure, but here's a problem. If you're going down a bumpy road, this is moving quite a bit. I mean, we're just barely doing this. And so yeah. we're worried about just uh, this metal underneath flexing too much. And so I think what we're gonna do is get some angle iron to run along the bottom here and connect to the frame to give it some more stability and rigidity underneath because I don't think we could let this thing go off trail as it is. No, I wouldn't, no, I wouldn't like that. We did mount the angle iron to stabilize the box and it worked great, but we did it a few days later. Hicks was now looking and acting the part of an overlanding trailer. All we needed now was to finish the electrical work and we'd be done with this project. Be sure to stay tuned to the next episode and watch as we deal with the tragedy that has befallen Hicks. A rogue washout in the road flips our poor friend over and destroys almost all of the work we've done so far. How much damage was done? Will we be able to salvage this build? Stay tuned to find out. Downward pressure on it. You know what I mean? No, I don't. Just straight down. <laughs> just like that. Sometimes you just got a, a little bit of a circle. And down again.